Steve Stevens didn't like that I exposed the facade of his operation, so he decided to respond with, So if you're going to try to come up with your dumb ass theory, make sure it's valid, little dick, because your shit sure as fuck is it. Steve made a pretty big mistake for calling me out. The goal with my videos is to educate how to find fake gurus, and I generally try to stay away from making the videos personal at all. So instead of playing nice, I'll just end his career. Uh, it was brought to my attention that Spencer did a video regarding my money management program and took an example of a clip from Money Talks six years ago. Yeah. What Steve doesn't know is that four years ago, I wrote an algorithm for handicapping college football games using the Martingale system. I'll link my GitHub repo for the engineers that want to analyze my Java code. I scraped multiple websites for 30 different team statistical categories. I grabbed historical point spreads and the outcomes of the games and stored them in a local database. I took all 130 FBS programs and ran my algorithm through a six year period to see what would be the result of a gambler using the Martingale system with a starting bankroll of $25,000. I treated each team like a different thread where I began game one with a $110 bet to win $100 against the spread. In my algorithm, I created what the score should be given a combination of different statistical categories and was able to compare the actual score against the actual spread to determine if my predictions would come out winners. After any loss, I would double the bet. After a win, I would stash the winnings and the next game would be another $110 bet to win $100. I wish I didn't delete my medium.com articles because I wrote about the results and I would have been up something like 14,000% in just a couple years of betting. I say all that because Steve thinks he's messing with an amateur who can't spot that he's a fake guru promoting fake winning percentages. The algorithm I wrote to determine that Steve is full of BS took only two minutes to write. So first of all, Spencer, find something else better to do with your time. Number one. With the amount of references Steve makes to my man parts, I think Steve wants me to come spend some time with him instead of making videos. Steve doesn't like that my current use of time is bringing awareness to the general public about the fake gurus that permeate throughout social media. What I find hilarious is that Steve does the exact same thing, which is call out BS in the sports gambling world. Here's an entire video of Steve talking about Vegas Dave. Here's a video of Steve calling out fraudulent sports handicappers. Here's a couple of clips on Instagram of Steve spending time talking about purse wearing gamblers. <laughs> Homeboy, I'm the best in the world at getting this money, and I don't want you guys to go into the tournament with one of these fake purse carrying bitches betting $500 money lines who don't know how to win, who lives with their mother parents. And for humor, here's one final Instagram clip of Steve talking about Vegas Dave again. Little guy, it took you two weeks to come back with a response and the funny thing is you didn't even come back with a response that was valid here you have a guy who tells me that i shouldn't be spending my time calling out fake gurus but spends a lot of energy calling out fake gurus that was a nice try steve but you didn't win this round if you're going to portray to act like you have money you're going to have to film a better show than sitting in your second room in your apartment with a $10 print in your background. One thing that's really important and to always remember is when you criticize someone and they return fire with personal attacks, you won. The reason why I never go personal is because it's showing you don't have any valid criticisms towards the subject. Ad hominem fallacy is Steve's bread and butter. I have a 10 minute video exposing why he has no idea what he's talking about with sports gambling. And his first criticism was the painting behind me that a friend gave me. He also doesn't know that this studio is actually in a house that generates about $3,000 of income for me every month between cash flow, equity, and appreciation. And I don't ever portray like I have money. I'm completely transparent about losing money. I was on the Bigger Pockets podcast explaining how I lost 60K from flipping houses. I was wrong. It was actually closer to 90K after I filed my taxes this month. I'm cool talking about losses because I don't need anyone's validation. I don't need or care if people think I make money or I'm broke. It doesn't matter to me. Steve, on the other hand, his entire business relies on the perception that he's a wealthy sports betting consultant, which couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, second of all, you're going to probably have to do better than your JC Penny suit, your $50 suit that you got on, claiming to have some money. I have to give it to Steve. He's an excellent trash talker. He has a million dollar mouthpiece and I thought this was hilarious. But I don't buy expensive clothing. I can easily afford whatever Steve wants me to afford to appear successful, but that's not me. I earn subscribers based on my intellect, not on my flash. Steve Stevens, AKA Darren Notero, may have more money than me, it's possible, but he's also 47 and I'm 30. By the time Darren was 30, let's see what he had on his record. 
District Judge Sally Larere Tuesday sentenced Darren Otero 25 to one year in jail for his part in a Las Vegas telemarketing scheme that built elderly citizens across the nation out of at least $234,000. I kept this out of the original video because my point wasn't to expose Steve Stevens, but since he came at me, it's only right that I let people know about this. Notero is one of six men charged in connection with a boiler room that telephoned elderly people and told them they won valuable sweepstakes prizes, but they had to pay $699 to get the prize. He was young and dumb. I'm all for second chances, so let's give him a second chance. Two years later, at age 27, Notero was arrested for another telemarketing scam where, again, he targeted elderly people. Oh, and Notero, who has at least one confirmed alias of Darren Sasser, was arrested for a previous telemarketing scam at the age of 24. So that was his second chance, and then he started scamming again at 27. This is clearly a repeated pattern. It was only right that he would end up running a boiler room for selling sports picks, which is known as one of the scammiest industries in America. As you're about to find out, Steve wasn't so honest in his TV show. You can call me broke, you can show me tax returns or your stupid car, but money doesn't matter to me if you scam the elderly or you lie about your sports betting prowess to sell picks. I would never want money if it meant I had to resort to the tactics Scam and Steve used to attain his wealth. I'm using air quotes for a reason. I don't know if Scam and Steve owns anything. I'm not gonna dox him, but the only house he owns in Vegas on public records is worth about 100 grand less than mine, and I can guarantee it doesn't generate 3K a month in income like mine does. You may make more money than me, but I can guarantee that I'll have significantly more when I turn your age, and I won't be insecure enough to start getting Botox all over my face too. Let me clarify you, you clown. First of all, uh, on my Money Talks clip that you took from six years ago, that client, I made it very clear in the show, which you left out, of course, mm -hmm. that he was what they call a weekend warrior. I actually left out the most important part of his weekend warrior scam in his TV show. In the episode, he gets his client to bet $11,000 on the Dodgers to win game one of the NLCS against the St. Louis Cardinals. This game was played on Friday, October 11th, 2013. Steve applies his money management system, aka his Martingale system, which is only used by absolute squares because Steve can't pick winners. Steve's client doubles down and gambles on the UNC Miami football game. What's interesting is that game was played on Thursday, October 17th, 2013. Steve's weekend warrior didn't seem to be a weekend warrior if he's picking games one week after the other. What's also hilarious is if Steve could actually pick winners, he wouldn't worry about making all his money all at once. He would advise his client for the past six years and taking his cut. But Steve wants his commission up front because he knows the client will leave him after a losing streak, which is inevitable when you have Steve's picking ability. Surprise, surprise, Steve's pick loses for the UNC Miami game. He advises his client to double down and bet the Seattle Arizona game. In the show, the client wins the bet. Amazing. Steve comes through, but that game was actually also played on Thursday, October 17th, 2013. Somehow Steve and his client bet a game on Thursday night, found out they lost, traveled back in time, and then bet a different game on the same night. The producers had to time travel and edit reality in order to show Steve giving the guy a winning pick. Let me clarify you, you clown. Steve thinks I'm the clown, but it looks like Steve wasn't so honest about his winning picks in the show. The show knew that Steve was a loser, so they had to alter the content to make it look like Steve could pick a winner. Welcome to the circus, Steve. Looks like you're the clown. The guy was only betting for the weekend. Just prove that one wrong. Again, if Steve was actually legit, he would be advising his clients to pick winners and they'd make money over time. He's still lying about this event years later. So yes, I've made it very clear in that show, money management is out the door when you have a weekend winner. The one thing that became very clear about you being on the show is how much of a clown you are. Every respected gambler trashed you. Sportsbook operators claimed that they had never heard of you. You claimed to be the bookie killer, but you were able to place bets in the sportsbooks without any issue. Any professional gambler that has an edge and wins is not able to lay down 30 dimes on a game like your clients could. The reason the books took your clients' money is because they knew with your advice they would be taking you to the cleaners. You do whatever it takes to make the mother money you absolute fucking clown like altering the programming so that the audience thinks you pick winners when in reality you have to go back in time and pick the game so it looks like you pick winners so if you're going to try to come up with your dumb ass theory make sure it's valid little because your shit sure as fuck is it. he sure does like to comment on other men's groin areas it turns out that my theory wasn't much of a theory but actually a full-blown misrepresentation of reality 
My whole life, my whole company, all my clients are based off money management and discipline. And you wonder where my clients are? Making a lot more money than you're broke. I wonder where that client on the show is who won all of that back in time fake money. If Steve actually won 80% of his games like he claims, he would have a couple of multi-millionaires as clients making him so much money that he could afford two yes men in his studio and not just one. But your $50 JCPenney shirt, you need to go read some more of those books in the background because you are an absolute clown. I definitely triggered Snowflake Steve. Here's a book called The Smart Money by Michael Koenig, who wrote about Billy Walters, the greatest sports gambler on the strip. This is a book you should read so you can learn how to make money sports betting, Steve, or you'd learn that the world's all-time best won a self-proclaimed 57% of his games. This is assuming Steve knows how to read. Don't ever try to come against the beast, homeboy. I will slay you like a mother dragon, little dude. If you're gonna come with something, come with something valid and find something else better to do with your time than come up with a clip from a weekend warrior from my show six years ago. Snowflake Steve seems a little upset that I've uncovered the truth about his TV show. If anything, uh, go pop some popcorn and get ready to watch the new show where my boy Crypto Face, the real crypto guy, you claim to be a crypto dude, you're joke. Snowflake Steve seems very triggered. I'm not sure where he got the idea that I claim to be a crypto expert. I never have been and never claim to be. I haven't even made a video on it, but since Steve time travels, maybe I'm going to go back in time and invest in crypto. Also, when you Google crypto face, all you see is stories about him scamming. Steve definitely abides by the phrase, you are the company you keep. Uh, the real crypto face, who's 29 years old, worth $300 million, is one of my new clients in the first show, and he's made millions. As we now know, Steve doesn't exactly keep it real for his reality show, so my guess is Steve is going to do some time manipulation again to make it look like his client is making money, just like in the previous show. I can't wait to see what editing tricks the producers will implement to cover up Steve's losing picks in his money management system. Of dollars. I, I got a great idea for him, since he is, seems to be such a good fan of yours. He's like, obviously my biggest fan. I don't follow Steve. I did watch his show on YouTube when researching for my sports gambling video because I wanted to see proof that suckers actually existed and bought picks from touts. One thing I do love about Steve is that he's wildly entertaining when he's calling people out. I enjoyed watching this. I thought it was hilarious. Likes to make videos. Why doesn't he go back on, let's say, our last 20, 25 podcasts? Go through How all about our the last nuggets. 300? Our last 300. Go through all of our gold nuggets. Can you imagine telling your friends that you started taking sports gambling advice from this guy? They would give you the same face that Sarah Goldfarb's friends have when they visit Sarah in the insane asylum at the end of Requiem for a Dream. Oh, wow. I can't believe Spencer has fallen that far is what they'd be saying. The only time anything smart comes out of this guy's mouth is when he's drinking from that water bottle. I don't know why this guy has multiple sheets of paper in his hand when his only instructions all day are to satisfy Steve. Their sponsor would be perfect if the brand name was bet against us. That bat is their security for all of the women coming into their office asking these two to pay their unpaid bill from their entertainment. Everything else that and we add that up. would happen and then show an accurate portrayal and clip of exactly what you have said is gonna happen. And what I happens. like that little d Go back to 300 podcasts that you ain't got nothing else to do with your time in your two bedroom apartment with your JCPenney suit. Even with all the cash money sitting on Steve's desk, he still can't buy class. Steve wears boss in his shirt so the minion on the other side of the room knows who to call daddy. Steve has the casinos behind him to remind everyone that they got built off of his clients losing streaks. The reason why the gold helmet on his desk isn't showing completely is because Notre Dame didn't want to associate with someone who can't even spell university. Steve wears the sunglasses because that fashion trend was cool in 2011, or also known as the last time he picked winners. Go back to all the podcasts, look at the golden nuggets, and do the percentage on those little And uh, when you get 70 plus percent, Come holler at me. Or the reason why Steve touts a 70% winning percentage is because he isn't educated enough to know that 70% means you win 70% of the time. What he added up from his podcast is a 30% winning percentage. He mixed up the winning and losing percentages. Instead of scamming older women, he should have been reading his 11th grade statistics textbook to know the difference. Here's an article breaking down why a 70% winning percentage is impossible with less than one in a trillion odds of hitting. But somehow Steve thinks he wins at a 70% rate. It's no wonder that him and Floyd Mayweather get along so well. Both can't read, so they're unable to see that the gambling ticket was a loser and not a winner. I win 70% of the 
time, yet I have no documentation for it. Better yet, have your girl call me. I need my Rolls Royce washed. Fair enough? Fair enough. I will always allow my girlfriends to wash Steve's car. Guys like Steve pay big money to have women around them just for the attention. Simp and Steve has a nice ring to it. Steve, this was all fun and games. I hope you didn't take it personally. Thanks for watching.